Coming up today on the Locked On Hornets podcast, the Hornets are dropping an extended version of Real Access tonight at 8 p.m. What do we want to see? Plus, I'll discuss some of the key guys off of the bench and what the Hornets Olympians are doing. Josh Green for Team Australia and Vasa Micic playing for Serbia. We'll get to all of it today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets. Your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cuz we live. It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free. We're available anywhere you get your pods. And that includes YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time? Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Yeah, I'm going solo again. It has been a rough three weeks. Some of it good, some of it bad for Doug Branson of everyhornetsboxscore.com. Maybe you can text him about it on the subtext information also provided on his sub stack. Yeah, the dude's got like, three four vacations lined up all right i guess that's an exaggeration but it's really like two vacations and then in the middle this week he was supposed to hop on had some scheduling issues so then he goes solo we finally team up for one show and now he's sick dude is sniffling again i don't know what it is maybe he caught something on his first vacation but the good news is he'll have another vacation to get over it So Doug just, I don't know what's going on the last three weeks, but you can have him for it. Doug Branson, LOH, also on Twitter. I'm Walker Mail. You can listen to me on WFNZ every weekday from 12 to 3. And also, of course, here on Lockdown Hornets every single day as well. Just a heads up, like for those that are the diehards that do listen every single day, the true sickos, if you will. I have to imagine we're going to be going to three days a week here soon. It might be next week. If not next week, I would imagine for sure it would be the week after that. And then it'll probably be like six weeks of us going just three days. And then we'll be back at it probably like, I don't know, middle September, late September. That's usually how this thing goes. So just a heads up for anybody that might be tuning in, not seeing an episode. Yeah, maybe this go around. It's been because Doug's been on vacation and he's been sick, but it will be because the content just ain't contenting like it used to. And then that will pick back up in the middle of September, maybe even late September. I do want to talk about this, though. The Hornets revealed yesterday that an extended version of Real Access will be dropping tonight at 8 p.m. Kevin Stewart, a producer for the Hornets as well, he said that as well. Thursday, 8 p.m., Hornets YouTube is where you can catch it. So if you got a nice TV set up, you can go pull up the YouTube app on the TV and then watch it like an episode of Hard Knocks, NBA local version. And that's what I wonder what we're going to get. So if you're a Panthers fan, then you might have seen the Blueprint episodes that they've been rolling with. You have Blueprint episode one and two. We actually haven't gotten the third one. I'm surprised about that for the Panthers so far. But there's a lot of access you get. And these things are done like real episodes. You're getting 30 to 40 minutes of team content. Maybe maybe not quite 40. But you're getting about a half hour's worth of content with Carolina. And I don't know if you're going to get that here with the Hornets. I would expect something like 15 to 20 minutes or something like that. But the trailer dropped. It was about a minute long. And in the trailer, they had Jeff Peterson. Some of the introductory comments, not from the presser, but just, hey, I can't wait to get to work and all that stuff. But Jeff Peterson was there. Charles Lee. I know we're going to get a profile on him. There was some draft coverage going on in that trailer. And then you also had the Miles Bridges signing. He said it's like a family. He said this before. And then it showed him signing the contract. And so you're going to get some of the looks inside with what happened this offseason what i'm excited about is if you go back to the summer league reels that they were showing charles lee his first practice ever it did not feel like all they were doing was showing the positive they were showing the real no pun intended with real access but they were showing what was true that nick smith jr was getting coached brandon miller right maybe it's easy to do that with the guys that's further down on the bench. But with Brandon Miller, who's a star with this team, 
who really might blossom into a franchise player, certainly seems so right now, they were showing him getting pretty coached and, and coached pretty hard, I should say. Like with Charles Lee, yeah, they weren't holding anything back on some of the star players. And so I, I feel like we're going to get something genuine and it won't be just this big fluff piece for everybody that we're going to get something real when we go behind the scenes. I have some high hopes for this. It, it does feel like the new regime understands the value of giving the people what they want, right? I, I don't know how much access we're all going to have via media as this goes on. This will be the first full year of Gabe Plotkin, Rick Schnall actually having a stranglehold on the organization, being the, the front guys, the majority owners. I don't know what's going to happen with Jeff Peterson, but if you ask the right questions then I think that these guys are willing to talk to you. And so it, it does seem like this team understands the value of the fans wanting the content and not being as reluctant to share that with people. And I would get why the organization's reluctant every once in a while. It's because they haven't been very good. And the more you show, then maybe you feel like the more they're just going to criticize us because we don't have a whole lot of wins to show for it. But that's the old regime. That's them. This ain't us. <laughs> We're changing the culture. Charles Lee is changing something over there. And we can see it. They, they know that the fans want to see some real change. And they want to see somebody care about it. Be passionate. They showed that in the summer league clips of Charles Lee out there on the practice floor. And it was the first one ever. And he's saying, hey, we got to defend, guys. Like, this is something that has been a real problem the last couple of years. The last, <laughs> yeah, you can go back pretty far. Probably go back to the first Steve Clifford stand. Let's change that because we haven't been winning. What we've been doing here in Charlotte hasn't been working. And so now I'm really going to be passionate about you changing on the floor. We have to be obsessed with daily improvement. That was a line from Charles Lee in the trailer that dropped for this real access. So some of the things I want to see, if we do compare this to the Panthers blueprint episodes and hard knocks even, they understand that fan bases eat up the draft content, the behind the scenes look as to what the player evaluations are looking like. Are you taking any calls? Did any team look to move up and take a player before you could make that selection? In this case, at sixth overall, I want to see the process into exactly how it was they landed on Tijan Salon. And it feels like the Hornets, at least at the beginning of that draft, we're really interested in Reed Shepard and maybe even more so Stefan Castle. And I look, this is going to be team content stuff. So there's not going to be anything damaging that they're going to put out there to their reputation. They'll be real, right? But as far as truly damaging, they're not going to put anything out like that. It, that that will be a little different, certainly with this hard knocks offseason that we watch for the Giants. Like there, there was a lot of stuff that hard knocks revealed and the Giants revealed, and just basically revealing their whole draft board. I mean, we're not going to get that. The, <laughs> the Hornets are going to make sure that if there are any boards in the background, those names are going to be blurred out. Any information on the whiteboard, yep, it's going to be blurred out. But as long as they're being real about this, then that's what I want to see. And I do want to see the conversations that led to the scouts, to Jeff Peterson, to his right-hand man, to the analytics department. I'm going to see all of them having a conversation into what led to signing or drafting to Jean Salon. And then maybe they even show some real conversation stuff about what happened with Miles Bridges. I, I They, they got to be careful with the marketing of Miles because if you'll notice, they didn't market him at all last year. Just way too hot. That's what it was. So this year, you're starting to see him a little bit. And I and, and it's it's like dipping your toes in the water again of starting to market Miles, but it's not a lot. He is in this trailer, so we'll see if he's featured a lot more in real access with this extended version. But yeah, like, it's a fine line you got to play over there if you're PR and you're marketing, because yeah, it's time will always help people forget about whatever it is. Yeah, you know, really, depending on the circumstance, time is always only going to help for the most part us forget about whatever it is that happened. And if you know, we were moved on pretty well from this in terms of all right he's on a new contract it, i don't know how many other people are moved on well from it but majority of people probably are and now they're dipping the toes in the water again of starting to market miles more so i just want to know how much like what's the volume of this if they're going to do that with miles and that was the biggest 
move of the offseason, I would argue even more so than drafting Tajan Salon with the first pick. So lots of stuff I want to see. Like I'm I'm interested in what we'll get here, but I'm I'm excited because if if it's anything like the clips that we had for Summer League and they were willing to show you, yeah, man, this isn't gonna just be a fluff piece. Like we're gonna show you a little bit of the real process behind the curtains. I'm hoping we continue to get that with the extended version dropping tonight again on YouTube, the Hornets YouTube channel at 8 p.m. All right, coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. I want to talk about some of the Hornets Olympians. Josh Green playing for Team Australia. Vasa Micic also playing for Serbia. We'll focus a little more on Josh Green. The box score, it's not great. But how much do we care about Green not scoring in the first two games of real competition over in Paris? We'll get to that in just a moment here on Locked on Hornets. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time? Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. They also have a million different deals. I've said this a million different times. Last-minute deals, flash deals where you can save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. So make sure you get the Game Time app. Zone deals, all-in prices, seat views, lowest price guarantee, Game Time ticket coverage. Lots of different benefits that you get with Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A. Locked on NBA for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. More Locked On Hornets ahead. We'll talk a little bit more about Josh Green. So if you have looked at the box score for Team Australia, just trying to keep up with the newest member of the Hornets, one of the newest members, I should say, after Jeff Peterson and company decided to go after now what is the former Dallas Maverick. The box score hasn't been kind. In fact, if you look at the two games that the uh, Aussies have played, Green is 0 of 5 from the field. He's 0 of 2 from 3 combined against Spain and Canada. They'll actually play again here today. I forget who the opponent is, but they'll have another game coming up here soon. He had four fouls against uh, Canada in their loss to a really talented team up north. So it, it's not been great offensively. But I just want to know how much we care about that as Hornets fans, because I, I think we understand the role as soon as you trade for him. We want to see improvement when you want, we want to see him maybe be a little more aggressive offensively. But the main attraction to the Josh Green experience is the hustle plays. It's the 50-50 balls, him coming up with that basketball more often than not. It's the passing ability. It's the defense, maybe on ball defense more so. And it's just the relentless style in which he plays, also the selfless style in which he plays. And that's exactly what head coach Brian Gorgian talked about when he singled out Josh Green and his two-way impact, talking about what his, he was doing for Team Australia. He said, quote, I think we play a style of game. Josh Green said this, by the way. I think we play a style of game where I'm fine not getting shots on the offensive end while still making an impact. That's what he said to ESPN after a practice. We have a very talented team, and there's multiple things I can do to impact the game. It's actually similar to what my role was with Dallas, just doing the little things to keep the team going. Yeah, and that was after, I believe it was a win, that comment was shared against Team Spain, and then they lost to Team Canada after that. So how much do you care about this box score? It, do you want him to be more of a defensive guy? Like, do you want him to be a two way? Because when we say two way, we often mean he's good at defense. And like, how how good do you want him to be on offense too? 
I, we've talked about some of the benefits he brings, like half court cuts. I think that's going to be big. I think he's going to be just a strong body that's kind of hard to defend, even if he's not blowing by you. I think it's going to take a lot of energy from some of those perimeter defenders to stay in front of him, to take some of those body blows that Green is willing to dish out. And so the cuts, not even coming from baseline, but also just coming from the wing and crashing, I think that's going to be hard to stop. The three-point shooting has gone better has gotten better and remember he took a ton of corner threes because dallas was excellent at it right luca driving into the paint kicking it out to the corner josh green will be there i think he was average hitting those shots but average is way better than what the hornets have been able to do from corner three the last few years so that's already an advantage the problem is you got to shoot it you got to be ready for it and that's one of the flaws i think you'll hear from some of the people that cover the mavericks is that he's a little reluctant to shoot that shot. He's a little reluctant to shoot in general from the three-point line. So does that change now that you don't have Luka and Kyrie in the backcourt? I mean, think about if we were to rank the offensive options on Dallas, you would go Luka one, Kyrie two. Then what, was it PJ three when he went over there? Like you're talking running with Daniel Gafford maybe. I, I mean like pick and roll stuff and just trash points for Gafford. Like Green was pretty far down on the list. It wasn't his responsibility. But he does come in and he provides the spark plug. He provides a lot of energy that gets the people going. And Dallas didn't want to get rid of him, right? The reason they got rid of him here is because they need to make up some room, I believe, to go get Clay Thompson because that's how the Hornets get him in that three-team uh, deal. And they only gave up second-round picks. Like that was it. So it was a low cost, and it feels like, it, if reporting is true, the Hornets were interested in Green at the deadline, but Dallas didn't want to give him up then. They were willing to give up a, a top two protected first round pick in exchange for PJ, and they didn't want to give up Josh. Like I imagine the protection would be a little more stern with that pick if you even give up uh, Josh Green, but they decided, no, we want Green, and we'll we'll lighten the protection here. So the Hornets said, okay, that's fine. And they end up getting both anyway. So I, I'm excited about what he can do. I do think he'll start. It'll be LaMelo, Brandon, Green in the one through three roles. Maybe Green, Miller are like switching two and three or whatever. But I'm glad that we have a defensive impact guy. And I, I wonder if as much as I liked the idea of Cody Martin working out for this squad, we know about the injuries. The guy just every time they try to ramp him up. And this is Steve Clifford's words, not mine. Every time they try to ramp him up, there would just be some hitch. There would be something there that didn't allow him to fully recover and get back out there on the court. It, the, the shooting, we had the outlier season. We really don't have a large sample size to choose from anyway, but it was the, the second year for Cody where there was some significant run for him where he started to shoot well from three. Really, it was the first half of that season, but even still like held up fine enough in the second half. And then got injured and we we didn't know if the shot was real. Like we still don't know how real the three point shot is for Cody Martin. Like we're, we've got a decent enough sample on Josh Green to say, yeah, there's something to work with there. Point being, I wonder if Green is just the guy we were all hoping Cody Martin could become, but never got there. And I wonder if there's even a higher ceiling with Green, which I would say yes, there probably is. So if that's the case, I like that player. A worked out Cody Martin, I like that guy. It doesn't mean that I don't want him shooting shots more so, like being ready, elbow in, LaMelo hitting him on a dime and then letting that thing fly. That's what I want to see. So like, he is known a little bit for being passive offensively, but it's it's not all that different from Dallas, right? Yeah, Luka, Kyrie Irving, I that's one of the more talented backcourts that we've ever seen. LaMelo Brandon, also really talented backcourt. So it's not all that different. You're taking a step down, but it's not in a different stratosphere. So, okay, if we're trying to figure out where he is on the offensive hierarchy, it's LaMelo, Brandon, Miles is ahead of him. I mean, I don't know where Josh Green is. Like, I, I wonder also if Mark is going to be somebody that's involved in some two-man game stuff more so than what you want to see from Josh Green. Like, he's not an ISO guy which is totally fine. I don't want him to be, but I, yeah, just less passivity offensively and bringing 
all the motor that you brought to Dallas. And it seems like he's bringing a team Australia like to see more than zero points scored in two combined games. But like, I'm just it also had four personal fouls in that Canada loss. And so like the aggressiveness, sometimes it's, a, it, it feels like not a double-edged sword, but sometimes it's just glass half full, half empty approach. What's going to happen here? Are we going to get the aggressiveness and get a couple steals and make it hard for players to play against you? Or, or are you going to foul in times where you don't need it and not be able to stay into the game because you're in some foul trouble? Like that, there'll be some problems there. Like I feel like we'll get more points from Josh, but we're seeing a pretty similar player as to what I expect here in Charlotte once the Olympics are done and then we start to get into the 2024 regular season. Let's talk about another Hornets Olympian coming up next on the Locked On Hornets podcast. I'm going to get to Vasa Micic and some of these guys that might play a critical role off of the bench. That's still to come here on Locked On Hornets. Before that, I want to tell you that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much. I never really want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. And all I have to do is open up the app, dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day. All summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com. Start making the most out of your summer. There's still time. It's only August 1st. August counts as summer. So you still got some time to go to FanDuel and make the most of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. More Locked On Hornets still to come. Josh Green going to be a key part of this team. I don't think off of the bench. The other guy in the Olympics, I do think, will come off of the bench if he's on the team at all. That's Vasa Micic, who has a better box score in the two games over uh, in Paris than what Josh Green has. So Micic scored 11 points, went 3 of 10, so not great against Team USA, had two assists, a couple of threes that he hit in that game. I think he was 2 of 7 from distance against the U.S. Had a better game against Puerto Rico, though. They trampled over Puerto Rico. Vasa helped Serbia by scoring 13 points, 6 of 10 shooting, 7 assists too. And he's coming off of the bench over there with Serbia, but he's logging like 20 minutes a game. So he's still a key part of what they're doing. I like Micic. I thought he was good last year. I, it was part of the reason that we were celebrating what the Hornets did, the, did at the deadline. You take a chance on Trey Mann, who just did not have a shot to play over with OKC. They were too talented. They were trying to create a role for him, but there just wasn't one. So the Hornets are like, yeah, we see the talent. Bring him over. Trey Mann shows you something, as does Micic. I've gone to this a few times, but the last month of the season, the first two weeks of April, Micic had a real shot to win rookie of the month and then his own teammate took it from him where it was pretty easy to decide the last half of april like yeah okay this is brandon miller's time now he, he's gonna go three straight months winning eastern conference rookie of the month but michich is a good player i just feel like he'll he'll be a key guy off the bench as long as he's here but to me he makes the most sense as a guy that you can trade still have something left over so it's not going to hurt you as much as if you might trade somebody else and it would be also th the higher likelihood of another team wanting somebody like Michic and more so a contender, right? Because if you're contending, those are the teams that are desperate for talent. Even if the margins aren't huge, like any little advantage that you can get on your squad, you're going to try to go with that. And if they can squeeze some of these contenders for an extra pick, like a second rounder even, I'm not expecting a lottery protected first in exchange for Micic, but you could probably get something more for a con from a contender than you could for some of these other squads. So Micic not sweating that loss as much, even though it would hurt a little bit. I don't even know how much the Hornets want to win at all costs this year. Like we could see a flip in motive at the deadline this upcoming season. Of course, we got to figure out what the health is going to be like because that's been a question the last few years. But it makes the most sense that Micic won't be on the roster and is the best trade bait slash would get the best in return from some of these teams that might need some ball handling going into the postseason. 
somebody that can get to the rim pretty well, that can create for others, even if he's not a great three-point shooter, there still are, are plenty of benefits to his game. And the Hornets could get rid of him. And it's not like I'm sweating it, right? Like you as a Hornets fan, you probably like Micic, but you're cool with him leaving because you understand that it's not like he is a huge part of the future. Where Trey Mann, yeah, like I could see him being at least have a shot of being somebody that's key off of the bench going forward. I mean, wait, the the, the backcourt is self-explanatory. Josh Green, you just traded for him, so I imagine he's going to play a big role for you. They are still hitching their wagon to Mark Williams. Nope, we're not thinking about drafting a center. We're not thinking about drafting Donovan Klingon. Mark Williams is healthy enough. We're going with him. He's our guy. Okay, we'll see how it works out. But those are the players that you think of as the future. And this is why, like, even if Micic is playing pretty well with Serbia, like, is a key part of a team that has some NBA talent, other guards. Uh, I, I, I like what he did last year, but he makes the most sense to trade. So uh, may, maybe he's even one of these guys that enhances his trade value in the first half of the season before you decide to let him go. There, there are plenty of options that you could roll with with a couple of the guards, but I, I really think, especially with 30 year old Vasa Micic. That'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your pods, and that includes YouTube. Even though Doug is sick, make sure you help him out still by going to everyhornetsboxscore.com. There you can also find his subtext information, and you can follow him on Twitter at Doug Branson, L-O-H. I'm Walker Mail. You can listen to me on WFNZ every weekday on Wesson Walker from 12 to 3 p.m. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow.